Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 1 with me, Eric Earhart, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In this video, I'll help get you started with Class 13, an introduction to correlation. <laughs> I don't know why I said it that way. Correlation. All right, we'll go down to the timetable, and we'll page down a bit to Class 13. And here's the correlation. And here, this assignment is a separate assignment to get us started. And I apologize, in a typical year, we would do data collection in class where we would use a ruler to measure your hand span and your height and also do a memory challenge of it with words. And uh, unfortunately, we, uh, it just is a little too hard to do remotely. So we will uh, save the RMD file and I'm going to use data from three previous years. The first data set, data set one, is for um, a correlation between hand span and height. And the second one is about um, memory recall. And I'll discuss each of these in turn. So we'll go over to our studio, which always moves over a little bit. And we'll open the new files. Just the correlation file is fine. And when, of course, whenever you just download something from my website, go ahead and knit it to make sure that it works. Uh, while that's working, let's see if I can also set the working directory to the source file. And the markdown is still going. Good. It's going to take a little while. I've got a, a couple big. Um, plots in there. It takes a little time. Alright, let's open the result in the browser and so we can zoom in and take a look. So there are two parts to this assignment and the rubric describes parts of both assignments. Typically I would give you a point for participating in data collection but we don't have um, a way to do that. Uh, the, the rest of the questions we'll see repeated again below, so I'm just going to skip past it for now. The first one is, um, in a previous year, we had a procedure for collecting students' heights and their hand span, as well as their gender, male, female. Um, and so we, uh, what we did is we had a ruler and we, and we we taped along like a yardstick to the wall. Um, and we had students stand with their back against the wall and other students or the student themselves would use another ruler to make a flat line across the person's head to the, to the yardstick behind to take the measurement. And th there, were, there were some measurement challenges. You know, you wouldn't necessarily always get the, the ruler straight across. Sometimes it would be going at an angle, and you would either over or underestimate the person's height. People's shoes were different. People stood with different amounts of um, rigidity in their back, so there were straight backs or not. And so there, was, there were some isu potential issues of measurement. Um, and then we had a... I think I made some paper. No, I, no, we had just normal rulers, you know, a 12-inch ruler, but with but on one side there were centimeters, and so we measured people's heights in inches, and we measured their hand span in centimeters. Okay, and we just had them splay their hand out as far as they could and measure from the tip of their thumb to the tip of their pinky finger, or their minimus, which is another name for pinky finger. Um, and then we had someone enter the measurements at the, into a Google spreadsheet, and then at the time we would be reading data from the Google spreadsheet. Um, since I've put all the data together in a single table, now I'm just having you, uh, we load the tidyverse, and then we read the data from the CSV file, and that's the DAT1 file that we just downloaded. There are a bunch of, in fact, it probably makes sense to take a quick look at... Um, at these two files and I think that we can look at a CSV in here since it's just a text file. The way it's organized um, first is by semester. You know what? It's going to be easier to view it 
as a s index cell, I guess. So we have three blocks of data. Um, let me get this to fit over there and down here. Okay. Good enough. Oh, bad enough. <laughs> Why does it reshape? All right. But now I can't see the bottom, which makes it hard to zoom. All right. Sorry, I only record a section of my screen, and in order to record it, I need to move it where it fits. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys, this is a real mess. There we go. All I, all I want to do is make this a little bigger and not have so much junk on the screen. All right, the main thing is the way we used to teach classes is we'd have tables. I think we had 14 tables in the class, and we'd have up to nine chairs at a table. And at each table, um, people would record their data. And when there was an empty chair, there's missing data. Okay, And we've got data from, from fall 2015. If I page down a bunch, we have fall 2016 that starts here. And then down to fall 19. I had a year of sabbatical and a paternity leave, so I was gone for a couple of years. Okay, so we've got a bunch of data here, um, almost 400, well, almost 400 row, rows, but there's a bunch of missing data as well. All right, um, so when I read this data set in, there are these rows that have some missing values, and those are values that we're going to exclude. Okay, so that's what, after we read the data set in, let me make this a a little bit bigger. Then we run the command na omit. So whenever there's a row with at least one missing value, na, not available, it will drop that whole row. And this is a case where we really want that to happen. And then finally, we've got this gender male female, and I'm converting that to a factor variable. All right. Um, the structure of the data set looks just fine. I've got 237 observations. I calculate correlations and, I've, and I make this little table. So I've got gender, I've got everyone together, and I have just the males and just the females. The reason being, obviously, males for humans are sort of larger than females, typically. And so wanted to see whether the correlations uh, differed um, between the genders and what would happen if we included everyone together. The way that I'm calculating the correlation, so this tribble command is a, first of all, it's a tibble, which is just a, a data frame, the name of, the, of what's a data frame in the tidyverse. And tr is for row-wise tibble. Anyway, the, the format is I create a column name by putting uh, tildes in front of names in front of the, in the first in the first row, and then under that I'm going to put the actual values. So we've got all under gender, male and female. And then the second argument from the data set, I'm going to summarize by and so whenever you summarize, you take a bunch of rows and you and you perform a calculation and you the result is a single row. So summarize, um, I'm going to create a new object called core for correlation. That's this core down here. And uh, I realize that this is capital, oh no, it's capital C. Okay, everything's fine. Um, value is core. Um, that is going to equal the correlation. That function, COR, is the function in R that calculates correlation between these two columns, the height in inches, and the hand span in centimeters. And that's going to give us a value, and it actually outputs it as a little table uh, in a tibble format. And if I, if I use the function pull, I can just pull the single value out. And that way, there isn't a table in this cell here, but there's just the value. 
So that's the first one. The second and third one is just the same, except the first one I'm first filtering to include only the males, and the third one I'm just including the females. Okay, otherwise all the code is the same, which is why I've sort of indented it the way I have, so that you can very easily see um, the differences between these three rows. Okay, so our, we have a correlation of about 0.7 for all, and about 0.5 for both males and females. Here is a plot. G galley is a way of creating a pairs plot or a scatter plot matrix. And this GG pairs function comes from the G galley. I'm going to, within the data set, I'm going to select three columns the gender, the height, and the hand span. I'm going to color it by gender. And on the lower, diagonal, well, you'll see in a second, I've got the smooth, and on the upper diagonal, I've got density. So let's, let's see, smooth, oh, lower is the smooth, on the diagonal is the density. Okay, so the diagonal, let me zoom out just a little bit, on the diagonal are the densities. So this is the distribution of height in inches, is the variable here. And the, the red is an F, so that's females. And blue is, is males. And the, the way I got sort of the colors to correspond to, you know, at least our modern uh, gender colors of sort of pink and blue, is when I created the factor variable for the genders, I put females first because red is the first color that's plotted and then blue comes next. So that was a, a choice afterwards when I had originally plotted it and s saw that the colors were the other way. Um, while I'm not a fan of uh, stereotypes or gender stereotypes in particular, um, it does make reading the plot a little quicker. So sometimes conforming to um, people's expectations in visualizations can help people interpret the plot correctly and more quickly. Um, down here, I've got a scatter plot, and the smooth puts in these uh, smoothing lines. So I've got sort of the linear regression lines in there to show that we've got the red females and the blue males, and they, they both have positive slopes and the correlations as we saw earlier, and as we see in the upper right-hand corner, correlations for females and males are about 0.5. You know what? Let me just double-check this. Females, okay. These numbers are correct. Females are 0 0.509, and that's what we see down here, 0 0.509. <clears throat> uh, sometimes I might not... Uh, on, on a video like this, someone might be inclined to not point out double-checking numbers, but I think it's really important to show you um, how much cross-checking I do to make sure things are correct. It's very easy to to make a mistake coding and have something um, end up incorrect. All right, so then I've got some questions to answer. Let me zoom in for the questions. I want you to interpret the correlations for males, females, and everyone combined, okay? So here I'd like you to put the you know the correlation equals this and then interpret what the correlation means and you might you might define correlation in terms of it's it's a measure of a linear relationship and you might also describe this as a a weak correlation a moderate correlation a strong correlation a perfect correlation uh, no correlation Use some adjective to describe the strength of the correlation. Um, these types of words, the strengths of correlations, are really going to depend upon uh, the field of study that you're making the interp interpretation in. So, for example, in biology, where there's tons of variability, uh, a 0.15 or 0.2 correlation might be very strong for for a given um, scenario, um, in you know, in body measurements, we know that size, you know, things scale with size. So um, 
you know, probably a 0.5 is a, is a moderate to strong correlation and a, and a 0.7 or 0.8 would be a very strong correlation. Um, I've got height was measured in inches, second question, and hand span was measured in centimeters. How would the correlation change if we measured both hand span and height in inches? Okay, so the question really is, does the correlation value depend on the scale that you measure it on? And then the third is, why is there a large difference in the strength of correlation for everyone compared to either gender separately? Okay, so just maybe looking at the plot here, the correlation for everyone combined for all these data points is 0.7, whereas each of the groups separately is only about 0.5. So why is it why does it jump up to 0.7 when you include everyone? Okay? And for there I would go back to the definition about how much these points resemble um, a straight line and how much oops and how much sort of spread, vertical spread around the line there is. Yeah, so I think if, if you think about that and think of a few examples, you might come up with the reason why uh, there's that jump. Part two, word memory scores. So this was a, a fun um, example in class. So I go to this uh, word generator. Let's zoom out a bit. And uh, where are the options here? Here we go. Oh, good. Okay, so I give them uh, 15 numbers, and I let them study those numbers for, well, let, let's go and, and read the uh, procedure. Okay, so I put up a list of 15 words, just as you saw. Then I give them 60 sec. oh, and I let, oh yeah, sorry about that. 15 words in 15 seconds. Okay, so I give them words like this, and I give them 15 seconds to read those words and commit them to memory. Then they have 60 seconds to write or type as many words as they can remember. And then they just, and then I show the words again and they can score themselves. Okay, I got umbrella, glove, and numerous, and chicken. So I got four, something like that. Then, so I write down a four, that's my f first score. Then, given your performance, make a guess as to how many words you'll remember in round two. All right. So if I got four the first time, maybe I think I'm only going to get, maybe I'm going to do a little bit better. Maybe I'll, I'll put five or six. Okay, something like that. And then we regenerate uh, a set of words. Give them 15 seconds. Let them write those words down. And then score themselves. And... Um, and see how they did. So you'll get each each person has three numbers that they recorded. So let's open up that data set. Okay, good. We didn't have to fight with Excel. Okay, so I've got the semester, not a big deal, the, the table and the person and their gender. I also added, let's, let's uh, expand these columns out. Um, I also indicated whether they were a graduate or undergraduate, just thinking that that might be, maybe there are differences. Um, I didn't really expect it. I also had whether the, the person had English as their native or first language, yes or no. And um, because I would expect that someone who natively speaks English probably would have an easier time remembering English words. And then we have their score for the first time, this, their guest score, their, their prediction about how well they think they will do in the second round, and then their actual score for the second one. Okay, so here, this first person uh, got a five the first time. They figured, I'll probably get a five again and then they got a six the second time. Uh, this person got an eight. They said, okay, maybe I'll do a little bit better, but then they got an eight again. So that's, that's sort of the pattern. Um, here's someone who got an eight and then 
figured, well, I got lucky. I probably won't do very well next time. And they did even worse than that. All right. Um, all right. And uh, so that, that's sort of, that's what the data looked like. Let's go over and look at uh, some plots. So I make a big, uh, so I read the data set in, I admit, oh, I omit the missing values. I create some factor variables for gender, the graduate, undergraduate um, indicator, and also their native English. I also calculate correlation between um, score one and what they would guess, what their prediction is for for, for their second one, guessed what they guessed and then what they actually got, and then the correlation between their first two, their first score and their second score. Okay. And here are the values, and you're going to spend quite a bit of time looking at these numbers. What we see is that, um, well, I don't want to give away all the spoilers. Anyway. I think I've told you enough to to think hard about about what these correlations are and why why potentially these values look the way they do. Okay. Uh, here I've done a GG pairs again, and this ends up being just a little bit too big. I've, I'm plotting all the all the variables. Um, you know, the, they are colored by the native English native language. Think, I, I was thinking that that would be the biggest difference, and actually it's it, it doesn't really play much of a role. It, it seems to play a bit of a role in this third plot, but I think that's largely because there's this one person here who, let's see, score one did very well, but score two did very bad. <laughs> so this blue point is having a lot of leverage on this regression line. Um, here's another one who, here's a person who did just the opposite. They did moderately well the first time, and then they did, really did excellently the second time. Um, look at this pink one. This pink one is a non-native English speaker, and they did awesome both times. So um, most people get, you know, between five and nine questions right and don't really improve. Okay. I also created a bunch of uh, individual points or plots to make it a little bit easier to look at. So here's uh, just score one versus guest two. And uh, their prediction versus their actual performance in the second time. And then the correlation just between their two scores. And here are the two questions to answer. Describe the relationships between the scores and the guest score. Okay, so that's basically these first the first two plots. And maybe talk about their correlations too, the strength of the correlations. Uh, and then the second question, explain the most surprising features feature of this of these data. And you don't necessarily need to predict what what I think is the most surprising, but I think that there is at least one thing that's surprising in here, and um, I think if you study this, you'll find you'll find maybe a couple things that are interesting. I can think of three or four interesting things in, in this data. And that's really what I'm hoping that you'll talk about. And I give you a little bit of lead. In particular, think about how the guest score, right, the prediction for the second attempt. Um, think about that score and how its relationship with the scores differs from the relationship between the two scores. So the question I'm asking really gets down to, I think, I think the most uh, direct, um, oh, you know what? <laughs> I've clearly mislabeled uh, this column. I'll fix that. This is intended not from gender. I copied that from the previous one. This is intended obviously as like this, the comparison between scores. Anyway, so, I have to set this up again. All right. Uh, explain the most surprising feature of the data. In particular, think about how the guest score, um, how it relates to the, to the actual scores, and how that differs. 
uh, with the comparison of the two scores themselves. So in particular, you know, look at these two correlations and compare, describe what's happening there with this third line where we compare the correlation between the two actual scores. All right. So that was, uh, this is one of the worst videos ever. <laughs> I apologize. Um, but I think this is an interesting assignment and I, uh, hope you'll, uh, enjoy thinking about this data and, uh, and reviewing what you've learned about correlation. And I apologize that this is a year when it doesn't really make sense to, to do the data collection ourselves. Um, that is a, a more fun way of doing this assignment. All right. Enjoy.